and welcome everybody. Today's topic is startup and setup with Delta RMCs. So what we're going to cover today um, is the basic wiring behind an RMC, um, whether it be SSI feedback or analog feedback. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, output to the valve, uh, force feedback, um, and then once we're through all of our wiring, um, we're going to go through RMC tool setup. So we're going to talk about how to set up an axis, um, how to check to make sure that your feedback is running correctly, um, checking your output, making sure that you're actually talking to that valve, um, and then we're going to quickly go through uh, tuning. So this is a very basic overview of um, RMC tools and the RMC product family. If you're not familiar at all with uh, with either, that's perfect. This this webinar is a, a great fit. Um, and you'll see just how quick and easy it is to go through and get one of these up and running. Um, I also have a live hydraulic system that we're going to be working with today. And let me quickly give you a little uh, little video shot of what that is. You can see we've got this cylinder here. Um, I've got a, a cylinder two inch uh, bore and a 1.375 inch rod. Um, I'm gonna be moving this back and forth and I've also got a rubber plate here that we're going to be contacting for force control. So we're going to go through all of that in the webinar, um, and we're going to set up all the way from scratch to uh, getting this running. For more information on using RMC tools um, and RMCs in general, we recommend going to our website. Uh, this section here, the education section at deltamotion.com, is a, a great place uh, to dig a little bit deeper. Um, you can see that we've got a training sequence here, um, and we also have some individual topics. So if you go through this, uh, perhaps it's your first RMC, you've set it up, you've wired it, uh, maybe it's time to go into some more programming, um, this is a great place to go and just see a little bit more information. We also have a pretty extensive uh, webinar library. Uh, you can see these topics listed here. Um, we try to go much more in depth on specific topics. Again, this is more of a general overview, but uh, for instance, maybe you've set up your RMC and you need to do some advanced programming. Well, here's a wonderful hour long webinar uh, all about advanced user programs. We've also got a few uh, webinars that are scheduled to take place as well. Um, so if you're interested in digging deeper into RMC, feedback types, or uh, perhaps you've got um, an older RMC 100 using RMC Win. Uh, we've got a troubleshooting webinar as well coming up for that. Okay, so on my desk in front of me, I've got an RMC 75E MA2 AP2 D8. We're gonna go through and talk about what each of these uh, modules do. So the RMC 75E, uh, this is our CPU here. This is what we're going to be working with. Um, this has a USB monitor, so you can see I've got a USB monitor port here. Um, it's an Ethernet slave. So what that means is we're always going to be the slave in the network. Um, we're not going to be requesting data. Instead, we're expecting maybe a PLC. Maybe a, uh, a PLC is sending data to us and we're interpreting that, or maybe it's requesting data from us. Uh, there's many different protocols we can work with, Ethernet IP, Profinet, Modbus, um, uh, Procedure Exist, FINS, DMCP, uh, most most all um, uh, PLCs we can work with. You know, if it's if it's Siemens, we're using Profinet, if it's Allen Bradley, Ethernet IP, uh, Modbus for most others. Our MA2 card here. Um, we're going to be grabbing feedback from this uh, in the beginning. We're going to, we've got two SSI or MDT uh, uh, ports that we can work with here, um, and we're going to be using SSI in this example. Uh, we also have two analog outputs. They are plus or minus 10 volts, 16-bit. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, this is what your control is going to come down to. So after all the uh, fancy math that takes place inside the RMC, your end result is going to be a plus or minus 10 volt signal out to your valve. Our AP2 card right here, uh, this is two differential plus or minus 10 volt or 4 to 20 milliamp analog inputs. 
I'm going to be using this uh, for our force control here. Um, used in position pressure control or position force control, that's what we're going to end up setting up here. We're going to set up a position force axis. So we're going to have both position control and force control on the, on the single axis there. And then we also have a D8. We're not going to be using this today, but it's a great card just to uh, get familiar with. Um, this is eight discrete I.O., um, individually configurable for any combination of inputs or outputs. So each of these um, I.O. points, you're able to set them up as either inputs or outputs. Okay. So step one, wiring power to the controller. Uh, this is a pretty self-explanatory one. I'm going to wire in a uh, 24 volts and a ground here. And so if I zoom out to my camera here, Right here, I've got my RMC75. It's all set up on my desk. Um, I'm gonna take, you can see here, I've got my uh, connector. Uh, I've got 24 volts here, and I've got uh, my ground connection here going to my power supply. Uh, there's no power to this just yet, and I'm gonna wait to power this system until uh, we've got everything else set up. So I'm gonna plug this in, plugged in there. Um, you can see that there's no LEDs because, again, I don't have the power flowing through here, but uh, nothing special, very simple setting up that part. Okay, and yeah, again, don't power the controller just yet. We're going to wait for that. Uh, next, I'm going to power my MA2. Um, what I'm going to do here is set up my uh, uh, valve connection, right? So for this first one, uh, for this first topic, rather, I want to have a connection to my valve, and I want to have a connection to my SSI transducer. Uh, if you haven't heard the transducer term before, um, the transducer is going to be our, our measuring sensor. It's going to give us uh, position feedback. So plus or minus 10 volt signal, control out, and common. Uh, these two pins, I'm going to be wiring up to my valve. So let me show you what that looks like here. So here I've got my connector with my uh, valve here. I've got my uh, valve input on this blue line here, and then I have the common from the valve on this white line here. And it's very important to note here, we, we really need the common um, here connected to the common on our MA2 card. A little bit hard to see, but I've got a common point right here on my MA2 card, and we want to make sure that those points are connected. Um, it seems like a fairly simple uh, fairly simple thing to do, but it's one of our most common issues is uh, not connecting that ground. So I'm going to plug this in here, and again, uh, the valve isn't powered yet. Nothing in the system is powered up just yet. So fairly quick and simple to get that plugged in and, and going. Okay. Uh, next, what I'm going to do is... Uh, plug in my SSI. This can be a little bit more confusing because you can see our labels here um, have the interrogate slash uh, clock plus and interrogate slash clock minus along with the uh, return data plus and return data minus. Um, the reason that these labels are the way they are is because this card can be set up for SSI or MDT and we're going to be using SSI so we're going to have our clock plus and minus our common and our data plus and data minus. And again, we really want to make sure that this common is connected. Um, it, it's very easy to just leave this floating and only run that common from your transducer to your power supply rather than bringing it to the card. But we want to make sure that it is brought to the card. Okay. So here I've got my uh, cabling for my transducer. Um, I have my clock plus on yellow. I have my clock minus on the uh, red with yellow stripe. I've got my common coming from my transducer on this gray line here. And then the orange is my data plus and the brown is my data minus. And I'm just going to connect that to my card here. Okay. So we're connected up now. Um, we're ready to go at this point. Um, there's only a few things I need to do. I need to establish communication with the RMC um, and power it up, and we'll be ready to jump into RMC tools.
this is a nice little uh, readout from our help topics um, explaining the SSI wiring. Uh, SSI is maybe not quite as confusing as some others, but um, if you are in doubt and wanting to know, uh, just to confirm that you've got the correct wiring, I highly recommend uh, jumping onto our help topics. We've got a lot of great wiring diagrams there. Okay, so now it's time to connect via USB or Ethernet. Um, we can choose either of these uh, connections here. Um, and after wiring is complete, power the controller, sensors, and valves. Um, so I'm going to connect with USB, and this is going to allow us to talk to the RMC uh, with our, our software RMC tools. Okay. Let's jump here. I've got my USB cable. Nothing special. Um, I'm going to plug this in, and then I'm going to switch on our power, and you'll see the LEDs flicker on. Okay, there we go. We've got the uh, the RMC controller um, light is blinking. You can see that none of my access lights are blinking just yet, and that's because I haven't configured any of our uh, axes just yet. This controller is uh, uh, just what you'd find out of the box. So we're going to go from start to finish. Uh, what would it take unpacking this controller to getting it up and running on a real system like the one that we have in front of us right now? Our first step is going to be configuring our axes. So we already have our wiring uh, in place. Um, at this point, we're going to then set set up our axes inside our RMC tools. So telling our RMC tools um, your valve is connected at this point and your SSI uh, feedback is connected at this point. Uh, to do this, we're going to click on Access Definitions. Um, then we're going to click New. We're going to choose a control axis. Uh, there's a few different types of axes that we could go with. Um, a reference axis is one where you don't really have uh, control over the axis. Instead, you're just getting feedback. Um, and then we have a few more advanced types as well. But generally, what you're going to be working with is this control axis. Um, and the control axis is going to have both an output and an input. Um, a great example is a cylinder that we have in front of us. We want to control this. Um, and so that's the axis type that we're going to be choosing. We can choose single loop or dual loop. Uh, single loop is for position only. Right now we only have position set up, so we're going to choose single loop. Uh, later on, we're going to change this to a dual loop setup, and you'll see how easy it is uh, even once an axis is set up to change it from one type to the other. Um, so our primary feedback in this case is going to be position, again, because I've got that SSI uh, position transducer. Once I've set up um, all of that, I'm going to uh, look here and choose where I want my control output to come from. Um, for us, I've got both of them set up on my MA2, and I've got them both set up on that axis zero connector. And this is what we're going to see at the end. Once we've gone through all of our steps, um, we'll be able to see what this looks like here. So let me uh, jump into RMC tools. Got my RMC tools project here. Um, right now I'm offline. I've connected via USB though, so I'm going to go ahead and click uh, connection path. I'm going to browse for USB devices. And I see my RMC 75 MA2 AP2 D8. So I'll click OK. And then I'm going to go online. Now I'm online here. I've got a little bit of yellow. Um, I'm going to go ahead and download uh, programs to controller. We'll touch on what we're going to use these programs for in just a minute here. Uh, but let me jump into access definitions and we'll go through that process. So you can see that none of my axes are set up, um, everything is blank here. I'm going to click New, and again, we're going to choose Control Axis because we want to be moving this cylinder. Next, Single Control Loop. We're going to be using Position. That's what we want to control. We want to control our position. And I can choose um, if I'd like the Axis 0 connector or Axis 1 connector. 
Uh, these don't both have to be the same. You can configure them in any way you like, uh, but we're going to choose axis zero for both of these. We'll click finish here. Okay. Now we've got our um, our axis set up, so I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to apply these changes. The controller is going to restart, um, and we'll have our axis ready. Okay, so we've got an axis set up now. I can see that now I've got a, uh, a red solid light here, and that's because I still have a few more steps to configure um, our axis here and let the controller know uh, everything that's going on with our with our uh, SSI feedback. But let's uh, jump in here. I want to talk a little bit more about our uh, physical system that we have here. Um, so we've got a single cylinder SSI position feedback servo proportional valve. Uh, again, this is everything that we just wired up. Um, our objective here is going to be run cycles, move between two positions, um, and we're going to be trying to hold position within uh, a hundredth of an inch. Uh, so we're going to be doing that with our, our cylinder here that we have in front of us. Uh, this cylinder, fast motion, capable of 30 inches per second. Um, and what we're going to do first is we're going to be testing our output. We're going to make sure that the, the valve is running, uh, that we're connected up and that everything is working like we would expect. So what I'm going to do first is send a small voltage. Uh, if one seems high or if your system is capable of, a, lot, of a, a great deal of force or a great deal of speed, I'd recommend even starting with a smaller uh, value. Again, you've got the range of plus or minus 10, so this would be a tenth of your max speed. Um, if you are in doubt or there could be damage, I mean, you might start with 100 here and kind of work your way up until you're comfortable. But this system, I'm going to start with a tenth. I'm going to start with one volt. I'm going to put this out. What I'm going to do is I'll use our plotting tool, and I'm going to start to trend our axis. This red line here is my actual position. This is my cylinder's position. You can see that it's moving up. Um, and this green line here is my control output. This is the signal I'm sending to my valve. So you can see as soon as I send this one volt signal, uh, my my position starts to move forward. And that's what I would expect. When I send a positive voltage, I'd expect positive movement. And then when I send out a negative voltage, negative one here, I would expect a, a negative movement, uh, a movement in the opposite direction. So let's jump to RMC tools. I'm going to pull up our camera view here. We can see our actual cylinder. And uh, you can see that this cylinder is fully extended. So I would expect if I did a direct output with negative one volts, I would expect this cylinder to go backwards. I send it here. I've clicked it. Um, nothing's happening. So at first, this has me kind of concerned. Well. What's going on? Do I need to check my wiring? Um, do I need to check my hydraulics? Um, do I need to see, you know, if uh, uh, maybe my, my pump isn't giving me any hydraulic power? Um, what can I do? Well, the first thing that you should always try is sending a, a voltage that's in the opposite direction. Maybe you wouldn't expect it to go backwards, but if I send a one volt here, I can see that I'm, I'm retracting. If I send a zero volts here, you can see I'm kind of drifting. I'm going to take care of this drift in a little bit, but you can see that I start to just drift. Uh, can't really hear that there's much going on with the hydraulics. And so if I send a negative one, I'm going to be extending. Now, that's going to cause us some issues going forward. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to fix that right now. And this is one of the first steps that you want to do um, with, with, your, uh, with your axis setup. I'm going to send this back to zero just so that we don't do anything crazy. And I'm going to go to Axis Tools. And right here, as soon as I get into Axis Tools, this is where you're going to be for most of your setup. Um, I can see that I've got a setup tab, my axis parameters, and I've got a really handy little item here called Invert Output Polarity. Uh, what this does is it inverts whatever my signal is, um, and we never really actually see that in the software. So as far as you're concerned, it looks like a positive voltage is sending you positive and a negative voltage is sending you negative. 
There's a few other ways we could do this. Um, you could swap your wiring, your, uh, your common and your control out, you could swap those two, um, or you could, in some cases, change the orientation of your valve. But this is a nice and easy way to do it in the software. So I'm going to click download here. And now let's try that again. I'm going to send a negative one volt. You can see that I go backwards. I'm going to send zero. Just kind of start to slowly drift. And I send one. And I go forward there. OK. So all of that looks good. I've got my uh, control output set up. I know that I have control of the system. And this is always going to be the, the first step that you want to do in your setup. You want to make sure that you can actually physically control that system before going for it further. Um, if you start to go further, there's not necessarily going to be an issue. Um, but if you don't have this step set up correctly, it can be causing you a, a lot of headaches down the road. Okay, next what we're going to do is configure our feedback. So again, I'm going to go to that access parameters tab that I was for um, the invert output polarity, um, and I'm going to set up my display units. I'm going to set up my feedback type, SSI format, SSI data bits, uh, clock rate, absolute incremental. We're going to set this all up so that the, uh, the controller can actually see what's, what's going on and we can make sense of the data that we're receiving. Okay, jump back here. I'm gonna switch over my RMC view here so you can kind of see what happens with our LEDs. And what I'm going to do is uh, I, I like to go to the All tab here. You can stay in the Setup tab, um, but I like to go to the All tab so you can see everything that's going on with your feedback. I'm going to open up the feedback, and you can see right now it's set up for MDT. Uh, and that's most likely why we're seeing this red LED here. Um, if I open up my error bits, and these bits are great uh, to diagnose, you know, when you're setting up, trying to find, is there something wrong? What's, what's causing me this issue? Why do I see this red LED? Well, it looks like I see no transducer and a transducer overflow. So both of those are feedback related. Um, let's correct our feedback before we go any further trying to diagnose those. So display units, I'm going to set this up for inches. Feedback type, we've got an SSI transducer. Uh, for me, my SSI format is in gray code. Either will work just fine, gray or binary. Um, SSI data bits, I've got 24 bits on this transducer here. Uh, this clock rate will be fine, and I've got an absolute linear transducer. So all of this looks good. I'm going to download here. Now you can see that I've got a few more error bits that popped up. Uh, positive over travel, transducer overflow, and no transducer. Those didn't go away. Uh, first glance that seems a little odd, um, but what happens with our error bits is they're, they're latched. So unless you either clear these error bits or send a motion command when the error bits are no longer present, um, you're going to still see these. So if you want a nice little hotkey to clear your error bits, get back to where uh, where you were before, uh, just use Control-Shift-C, and you'll clear those error bits. So I got rid of no transducer and transducer overflow. But you can see I still have a red LED, and I've got a positive over travel uh, here right now. Um, that's okay for the time being. We haven't scaled um, we haven't set our scale and our offset, and so I can see right now my target and my actual position is uh, this, this crazy large number, um, and we'll go through and we're going to scale this in just a second. Okay, so for our scaling and offset, we've got a great little wizard, our position scale offset wizard. Um, I'm going to launch this, and we'll walk through the steps of uh, setting these up. So first step. You choose, do you have a linear transducer or a rotary transducer? We've got a linear transducer. Uh, then we're going to calculate um, our position scale and offset. So you don't need to do this calculation. It's going to be done internally in the RMC. Uh, you set your desired position units. Uh, for us, usually that's inches. Um, and then transducer settings. The resolution that I have on my transducer here is one micrometer or 0 0.001 millimeters. 
Um, my offset, I'm going to set this up as well. Uh, what I like to do is retract the cylinder um, and then use the current value, use this button here, and we'll use this as our zero point. And then you have the option, do you want increasing counts to equal increasing position units or decreasing position units? We're going to say increasing position units. We'll click next here. You can see that the values are going to be calculated for you right here. Usually you'll click next here. You can just kind of sanity check this value, make sure that it makes sense or that it doesn't seem too far off. But um, the RMC does a very good job. It's, it's going to calculate the right value if you put in the right numbers. Um, and then you'll click finish here. It'll show you all the items that it's going to change and you're, you're ready to go. Okay, let's do this in RMC tools. So I'm going to open up my tools and wizards tab here. I'm going to click uh, launch the position scale offset wizard. We're going to choose the transducer or encoder method. It's a linear transducer. Desired position unit is in inches. My resolution is uh, 0 0.001 millimeters. Um, and again, I'm going to retract this cylinder. So let me pop open my other screen here. I'm going to retract this cylinder. Uh, the nice thing is even when you're inside this wizard, you can still interact with RMC tools. So I can send out a negative one and I can send this cylinder all the way to the back here. And once I've once I've got to my, uh, my zero position or my home position, I'm going to click use current value. So I'll click use current value here, throws in the counts that I'm seeing right now. And I'm going to say treat this as a position of zero. Click next. You can see my scale and my offset that have been generated, click next. Here's the uh, the items that are gonna be uh, changed here. Click finish. You can see I've got some new uh, values inside here. So I'm gonna click download. Okay, so we're downloaded here. Um, now I've got both a positive over travel and a negative over travel. Um, so I've got I've got some issues that I need to resolve here. Uh, let's let's go ahead and we're going to send this cylinder back up. I'll click one here. You can see the negative over travel went away. I still see that positive over travel. So what I'm going to do is set my travel limits. I'm going to go down to target. And I've got a positive travel limit and a negative travel limit. Um, I can see that I'm at 21 inches now. I've scaled everything and my feedback looks good. I've got 21 inches here. Um, if I were to go a little bit negative, you can see it's retracting, and those are the correct values. Everything looks good there. So I'm going to set up my positive travel limit a little bit greater than we are here, and the reason I'm going to do this is because we'll, um, we're going to be using this for force control later, and I want to make sure that I don't run into my limit there. Um, if, for instance, you really wanted to make sure that this cylinder didn't contact the part in front of it, um, you might set a position limit of 20 or 19 or 18. You can set it up at, at any number so that it doesn't go past that point. Uh, but for us, I'm just going to set it a little bit past. I'll say 23 here, and I'm going to say zero for our negative limit. I'm going to download this here. And again, you can see that didn't go away, so I'm going to do my Control-Shift-C. There we go. Uh, no more error bits. Look clean here. And if I go over here, you can see that I've got no more red LED, I've just got my green blinking. So whether it's green and uh, blinking or green and solid, um, either is fine, you just wanna make sure that your LEDs aren't red. Okay, we've got that set up done. Um, we're ready to move on to our next step. What we're gonna be doing is set, setting the output bias. Uh, you all saw that little bit of drift that we were seeing earlier on. Um, this is because the, the spool and the valve is basically, it might need to be nulled a little bit better, um, but that's okay. We can account for this in our software. Um, we can change our output bias um, to reflect uh, what we want it to be. So there's a couple ways that you can set your output bias. Um, you saw from my image there that I, I showed where the output bias was in our tuning terms. Um, I can also set it here from my output tab, and I'm going to set it here uh, in this case. Now, if 
say you were tuned up, uh, what you could do is move your cylinder to the middle of the stroke um, or somewhere around there and click or uh, send a hold current position command. Uh, you can then look at, well, how much voltage is it taking me to hold position? Um, and you could use that uh, to, to keep you there and you could put that in your output bias. For us, I'm not tuned up just yet. Um, usually this would be a little bit of kind of guess and check. I, I've already gone through this system, so I know in this case that my output bias is negative 0.171, or right around there, so I'm gonna download this. Let me pull up my actuator view. I'm gonna do a uh, negative one here. We'll do a zero, and you can see that there's, there's very little uh, drift. If I look at my target position, I can see, well, there's a little bit, and that's to be expected in open loop control. You're not gonna have it dead steady in open loop control. Uh, that's where you'd want closed loop. But you can see it's a uh, very, very reduced drift. It's nothing like we were seeing before. Okay, output bias is set. So from this point, we're ready to start tuning our system. I'm not gonna go in depth into how to tune a system. If you'd like to uh, go a little bit deeper, learn a little bit more about tuning, there is some wonderful resources available on our website. Uh, there's a few great webinars on how to tune up a system, how to tune up a basic system, how to tune up a difficult system. There's a lot of great information there. But what I'm gonna show you is a very quick and easy approach to doing our tuning. So what we're gonna do is click on our tuning wizard icon here. And we're going to then use our auto tuning wizard. Now this wizard is gonna move us a little bit forward, a little bit backwards. It's going to uh, get an idea for how the system is set up, the parameters that the system is, uh, uh, the physical parameters of the system. And we're then gonna create a set of gains that you're gonna be able to apply to your system. So we've got a hydraulic system. Um, so we're gonna choose this button here. And what we're gonna do is two moves. So starting position, uh, what, the, what the controller does is it looks for your positive and negative travel limits and it uh, puts those positions somewhere in between there, um, usually, usually about three position units uh, before or after. So for us, we might change our secondary move to be a little bit shorter, um, but it's gonna start us at three for our first move. It's gonna move in the positive direction going to output a voltage of three volts and we're going to ramp up at 50 volts per second and it's doing this to generate a plot where it's it's the rmc is then going to analyze that plot and determine the gain set that we need uh, same deal with our secondary move right except it's starting at a greater position it's moving in the negative direction and it's putting out a negative voltage okay once we get there we're going to click move to start and we'll see that a, uh, a plot is generated. Um, we're gonna see what we do from there. So our plot is gonna be generated here. We're looking for this basic kind of M profile here. It might not be uh, quite this M profile here, but it's gonna look very similar to this. Um, this is after we click move positive here. So you can see in this example, we moved our actual position, this red line to a position of three, moved up. And then we're gonna do the same thing in the other direction. We're gonna to move to our start and then move negative. So we went 27 and we're moving negative here. And again, uh, you don't need to do anything here. Um, this is going to be able to, the RMC is gonna be able to analyze these plots. You just need to move it back and forth. Okay, so let's do that. All right. So for my tuning, where I'm gonna go is my uh, my plots here. I'm gonna open up plotting. Uh, let me make sure that my plots all look good. Um, this looks fine to me. I only need the one plot, so I'm gonna get rid of the other. But I can see that I've got a plot here. Uh, this is what is going to be used for tuning. Um, again, the parameters here, um, uh, axis zero actual position, that's this red here. Um, the green is my control output. This light blue line is going to be my target position. Um, and then I'm gonna have a target velocity and an actual velocity as well. Now, one thing that we might run into is um, uh, an error that stops us while we're trying to tune. I'm gonna show you how to get through that there, but it's fairly likely that we're gonna see a, uh, an error as we're going through our tuning process. So what I'm gonna do is click on my tuning tab. 
and then I'm going to click on my tuning wizard. Use auto tuning wizard. This is going to move us back and forth. Accept the uh, liability agreement. Uh, we have a hydraulic system. We're going to do two moves, one in each direction. That's so that the RMC gets a good feel for uh, moving both forwards and backwards. Starting position 2.2 .2 and secondary move. I'm going to reduce this just a little bit. We'll say start at 15. Um, that'll be fine. That's just so that I've got a good deal of margin and it's nice to have a, a decent amount of margin in between um, uh, where the move is. Click next and I'm going to click move to start. Now our starting position, again it was the 2.2, .2, so I can see 2.2 .2 right here and I can see that my cylinder also moved to 2.2. .2. Now I'm going to click move positive and it's going to look like a little bit of a jerky movement. Um, You'll see as I click that, if you saw the cylinder here, it kind of just jerked forward, but I get that nice M profile that I was looking for, so this plot looks great. I'm gonna click next. We'll click move to start again. And that moved me to that position of 15, right? You can see it both here and there. I'm gonna click move negative. See my cylinder move negative, and I've got the inverse of that M, kind of a W profile here. So I'll click next. And I'm going to click finish. And now I have our gain calculator here. So if I was going through the tuning process, what we always recommend is start at this lower conservative end, apply your gains, um, and then we would do some moves backwards and forwards. So we can set up these quick buttons to do some moves. Let's say we want to move to a position of 5 at a speed of 20, acceleration of 100, a deceleration of 100 is one of our moves. And a secondary move, we want to move to a position of, we'll say 10, speed of 20, acceleration 100, deceleration 100. We'll actually make this 15. Let's do a little bit larger move. Okay. So I click move to five. Not really seeing much there. And I see an error that's popped up right here. So that error, um, I go into access tools. I could see that I've uh, I've received a command error here. Um, what I'm going to do is go into my event log, and I can see what's happened here. Um, I'm going through this kind of quick. This is a very nice diagnostic uh, diagnosing tool, though. Um, access is not enabled, so what I need to do first is enable my controller and send this. And we'll most likely see another error, but let's try again to move to five. Okay. No error. It's actually uh, fine here. I was expecting maybe to see a following error. Um, it's generally a good idea to turn off your errors as you're uh, tuning up the system. You can see that this is a very nice system, and even at the conservative level of gains, um, we're, we're controlling very well. We're doing a great job of moving back and forth. Now, if you were to see a, a following error, um, what you can do is go into your access tools right here open up your halts, auto stop configuration, and you can see that all of these are set up for a direct halt right now. Um, I could change this to a status only, and this is generally what you're gonna do during tuning, because usually it's not gonna be tuned up great right off the bat, and you're gonna have to adjust that slider bar up slowly. Um, right now, it's, it's a good tune, it's a nice system, it's a great valve, um, so we're not seeing any issues there. Uh, but usually you're gonna end up uh, somewhere, somewhere kind of in the in the middle here with the bar. Um, sometimes it's a bit higher, sometimes it's a bit lower. It really depends on the system, but usually you're going to have to adjust it a bit off the bottom. So if I apply my gains here, you're going to see it's controlling very nicely. It's controlling really well. Um, my actual position is following my target. The red line is right on top of that blue line there, and that's exactly what I want to see. Okay. So we're tuned up, we're ready to go. If we only had a position axis, we'd be ready to program. Uh, we could throw in a program like this. Uh, this is a simple program that moves us from a position of 10 to a position specified by a variable. And it repeats these steps endlessly, back and forth, back and forth. I'm not gonna show you this, I'm not gonna go through um, how to run this, but again, if you'd like to dig deeper into the RMC, We've got some great webinars and resources 
on uh, doing user programs, whether they be advanced or, or more simple like this one is here. What we're gonna step into now is adding some force control to our system. So you've seen this cylinder before. It's a two inch bore, four way proportional valve, um, 24 inches long. We've got our one micrometer uh, transducer, uh, but we also have two pressure transducers, one on either side of our cylinder. What we're gonna be doing is taking these two pressure transducers, um, what we're gonna be doing uh, with these pressure transducers is we're going to be uh, taking the differential pressure across them and our geometry of our cylinder, uh, the two inch bore here and the 1.375 inch um, rod here, and we're gonna be able to calculate what force we see on the end of our, of our cylinder. Okay. We're gonna control force uh, fairly tightly, um, and we're gonna be able to do this uh, by just changing our axis definition. So I'm gonna go into my axis definitions again. I'm gonna click change, and I'm gonna change this axis that we were working on to a dual loop. I'm then going to choose force dual input differential, right? Because we've got those two uh, transducers, we make it nice and easy. You don't have to do any of your own calculations. We'll do it all for you and you'll end up with a result that looks like this here. Now, I wanna talk a little bit um, about wiring as well. Um, for force wiring, it can be a little bit more confusing. Um, really recommend that you go into our downloads, uh, download a manual with your startup guide. It's got great examples of all the wiring, um, and it's gonna make it a whole lot easier uh, to get through and, and understand if maybe you have a transducer that's not quite as standard. So before we jump into our wiring, let me set up our axis. So I'm gonna go into axis definitions, right? Just like we did in the beginning. I'm gonna click change here. And we're gonna change this single loop to a dual loop. I'm then gonna change my secondary feedback to force dual input differential. So I've got uh, my AP2 card. This is where it's coming from, inputs zero and one. This is my only option because it's an RMC 75. We uh, don't have a whole lot of inputs and outputs. It's a smaller uh, RMC. Click OK here. And you can see that my axis has been set up here. OK. So it looks good. I'm going to restart my RMC. Changes are going to be applied. All right, ready to go there. Now, if I show you my camera view, you can see that my axis zero now, again, it's got the red LED and I can see that my AP2 has the red LED as well. Let's talk a little bit about wiring and then I'll show you what we've done um, with our wiring here. So wiring force inputs can be a little bit less cut and dry uh, compared to the SSI. Um, for instance, if you only have an analog um, out and uh, power for a 4 to 20 milliamp, um, you're going to be using our jumper here, right? And you're also going to be connecting the power supply common to the power uh, common or to the common rather of your uh, your AA, AP2 card here. So a little bit different. Uh, it could be easy to miss this connection. Um, this is all found in our startup guide that you find in that manual section. Uh, so I definitely recommend downloading that if you're unfamiliar with uh, with the RMC wiring. Um, if you have a four or five wire transducer, it's usually pretty easy to see. You've got your analog plus and analog minus wired up here. You've got a signal common that goes to the common on your card and a power common to your power supply. If you have a three wire, uh, this is where usually one of the commons gets missed. Um, you'll have your common going to your analog and minus. You'll have your common also going to the common of your card here, and then you'll also have it going to the power supply. So you wanna make sure that all three of those connections are made um, so that you have everything set up right. Wiring force inputs. We're gonna wire our input zero and input one plus and our input zero and one minus. You can see uh, zero plus is here, zero minus is there, one plus, one minus. And we're gonna make sure that that common is connected as well. So I'll show you what we've got here. 
I've got my um, my wiring set up for um, my my pressure transducers here, and I've got my input plus on this white. I've got my input minus on the green, um, uh, input plus for my secondary on the white, and input uh, minus for my secondary on on this green here. And then this black is a common that's uh, connected to both of their commons. So I'm going to plug this in. So we're plugged in. You can see that the red LEDs are they're still there. Um, let me go ahead and we're going to clear our faults, but we're also going to configure um, our force feedback. So I've got my force uh, feedback here. I can see my display units. I probably will change this to pounds. Um, both my sensors are plus or minus 10 volts. Um, and once we configure that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make sure that we uh, we see some actual feedback here um, and that you don't have a uh, no transducer error anymore. Let's move this down just a tad. Okay. Access tools. I'm going to look at my secondary feedback, um, plus or minus. Uh, 10 volts, that's good. I'm going to change this to pounds here. I'm going to download. Um, let's look at our error bits. I can see I've got the no transducer, transducer overflow, negative over travel. I'm just going to clear this control shift C. We'll see that all of our errors have gone away. We've got green LEDs everywhere. So that's that's great. We're, we're ready to go. Um, I'm going to click on the all tab here because I'd like to see the feedback. See the pressure force feedback. Um, right now, I haven't been scaled, so it tells me that I'm at uh, negative 1.9 pounds. Uh, maybe that's correct there. It's it's hard to say. Um, it looks like it's most likely not, though, so we're going to need to scale this. Just like we had for our position, we also have a force scale and offset wizard. So I'm going to launch this wizard. This is a very nice wizard. Um, we recently made some updates to it. Uh, it's going to ask you if you have a single-ended rod cylinder, double-ended rod cylinder, multiple cylinders, a motor, or a custom um, actuator configuration. So uh, pretty much any configuration you have, we're going to be able to calculate. We're going to uh, be able to do the calculations for you, so you won't need to get deep into it. I'm then going to choose my desired force unit. For me, it's going to be pounds. Um, I'm going to look at what channel A's minimum and maximum values are, and then I'm going to look at channel A and B, uh, uh, both their signal values, and then uh, what is set up. My pressure transducers here are set up uh, 10 volts. They're going to, they're uh, sensing 210 bar. Uh, we then are going to put in the dimensions for our cylinder. Uh, for us, it's the 2 inches and the 1.375, um, and as channel A cap pressure increases, um, we're going to increase the uh, the pressure for our axis here. Um, channel A force scale, uh, force offset, force B scale, and force uh, B offset. Click next, and we're going to finish, and we're going to download this to our controller. Okay, so let's go through that process. Tools and wizards. I'm going to launch the um, uh, force scale offset wizard here. Single-ended rod cylinder. Desired position units, it's pounds. My maximum is 10 volts. My minimum is zero volts for both these sensors. And 210, 210 bar here. Next, uh, we're going to leave this channel A. Inside diameter is 2 inches. And then I've got 1.375. This is in inches. Next, next, finish. There we go. I'm going to download here. And since this, uh, since I know I'm not going to cause any damage with this, and I just like to show you guys um, what this, uh, what we're going to put out here. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to send a direct output of one volt. We're going to run into the end here, and you'll see our actual force start to climb. Um, it's going to be around 4,000. Yeah, 4,300. Um, so I can see that I am putting out what I would expect to see from our system here. So that looks good. My force feedback, it looks fine. Now, just like we did with position, 
we're going to need to tune um, our force feedback. So what we're going to do is start with a small proportional gain, uh, something small like this. And then we're going to try to enter force control. We're going to use a program like this uh, for, for one main reason. If you try to enter into force control when you're not contacting a material, uh, what happens is the controller will start to uh, build up voltage, right? It's going to put out, you know, say it puts out one volt. It's expecting to see a change in force, but since you're free floating, it doesn't see any change in force. So the next cycle, the next millisecond, it puts out more voltage and more voltage and more voltage until eventually you slam into that part. So to avoid this, what we're going to do um, is we're going to use this program. And not only does this avoid slamming, it also creates a very nice smooth transition from position control to force control. So I'm going to move to my uh, position of 20 here. We're going to make this actually a little bit greater for us. It's going to be 25. Um, we're going to wait until we see uh, 1,000 pounds of force, and then we're going to enter into uh, pressure force control. And I'm going to change this again. I don't want it quite at 5,000, so we'll change this a little bit lower. OK. Let's go to our programming, enter force. I'm going to enable this program here, and let's make those changes. I'm going to make this 25 here, and I'm going to make this 3,000 here. Okay. So I've downloaded this program. I'm going to go into run mode so that we can run our programs. And let me just retract this a little bit. I'm actually going to use a move absolute. We'll move ourselves to a position of five, and I'm going to go into my plotting. Make sure I have everything there. You can see now I've got target force is this yellow, actual force is this black. If I go into my tuning here, I can see that I've got a very small force proportional gain. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to trend this here, and we'll run our enter force command. Okay, axis halted, right? So I'm seeing my axis is halted, if you didn't catch that. Um, uh, command modified, requested position, uh, truncated at limit. Um, let's see here, what was my target limit? 23, um, let's make this 26. Okay, I expect to probably see a few more errors, but let's give this another shot. Okay, so we're trending up here. We're moving very slowly. Uh, waiting until we see some force, expect to see it just about there, and there we go. We got our, our second error, right? So now I've got um, uh, requested force truncated at limit. So just like our position, we need to set up a, a limit here for our force. Okay, so we've got target here, positive force limit, I'm going to say 5,000 pounds. I'm going to download this here, and just for the sake of time, uh, instead of going through this error, I'm going to um, I'm going to change this uh, force following error to a status only because we're going to be tuning this up here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'll move back here. We're going to trend this one more time. I'm going to use my enter force program. There we go. Okay, we've entered force. You can see that we haven't quite got there, um, but we're, we're trying to move in the right direction. You can see that that black line is moving towards the yellow line, but again, it's, it's just not quite there. What I'm gonna do here um, is set up a few different force commands. I'm gonna move backwards and forwards. So I'm gonna say I'd like to move to 1,000 pounds in two seconds. I'd like to move up to 3,000 pounds in two seconds as well. I'm going to make this plot a little bit longer so that I can see everything that's going on here with my force. Go back to tuning, and let's click this move to 1,000. You can see I'm moving there. Didn't quite get there, but we've got to move there. Looks okay. What I'm going to do is run this through my tuning wizard now, just like I did with my position axis. So I'm going to click tuning wizard. I'm going to choose the one plot here and finish. 
and that's it. That's the second option that we can do, and the only option for force is using a, an existing plot. Now, I've already gone through this system, um, so I have an idea of where we want to be for uh, good force control, and it's going to be right around here. Um, what I'm going to do is reduce it a little bit. I'm going to apply these gains here, and I don't really like how the uh, force feed forward was, was calculated. So even though I use the tuning wizard, I can still change these manually. I'm going to download this here. And let's try a move. Let's see how this looks. Okay, I'm at 3,000 pounds right now. I'm going to move to 1,000. That looks great, right? It's tracking very well. Maybe you could tune it up a bit, uh, a bit better. Um, but we're, you know, once we've settled here, we're within three pounds. And again, you could tune this up hotter. You could uh, keep going with some time here. This is just a basic, very quick tune, but you can see that I'm controlling force very well. I'm right on track with where I want to be. Okay. Now your controller is ready to go. Um, your next steps at this point are going to be programming, communication, access synchronization, maybe more, right? It all depends on your application. And again, we've got some great webinars. We've got great information on our website as well. If there's a specific question you have, feel free to reach out. We're always happy to help. Um, feel free with any questions. So to summarize this, um, starting an RMC from scratch is quick and easy. You can see we went through, we tuned. Um, both position and force uh, from nothing uh, in just, just under an hour. Um, we've got clear directions. Uh, the RMC is a fairly easy device to work with. Um, great tools and wizards for startup and diagnostics as well. So what's next? Well, you've got different controller options, right? The RMC 75 that you saw today, that's one to two axes. The RMC 150, two to eight. RMC 200 light up to 18 and RMC 200 up to 50 axes. Each of these controllers uses the exact same RMC tools. Um, the process is going to be uh, just about exactly the same. The, the wiring, uh, where the wires go is going to be a little bit different, but same exact idea for that and RMC tools set up the axis definitions, the programming, the tuning, all of that's going to be the exact same with any of these controllers. Delta has uh, many resources, uh, knowledgeable Delta sales, uh, technical support team and distributors. Um, everyone is, is here to help. Um, application docs, we've got some great specific application docs. So say you've got a four cylinder press uh, leveling application. Well, we've got a doc for that that explains exactly the, uh, the Delta approach to getting uh, your system up and running and tuned, uh, running very well. Um, we also have some great application specific examples and we have a hydraulic design guide um, as well that AJ will talk about a little bit here in a bit. Advanced training is another option. Um, maybe this was all review for you. Uh, maybe you're ready to take, uh, take your RMC knowledge to the next step. Well, we've got an advanced training that's offered here at Delta twice a year. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a longer course. Um, we go through much more hands-on. You get to use our entire hydraulic lab. You get to use PLCs, um, all kinds of more hands-on specific items where you really get to dig in and you've got access to all the, uh, all the great engineers here. So you can ask them about your specific applications. Um, are there any questions? Do we have any questions, AJ? Thanks, David. Yeah. So as you were going through the setup, uh, you kind of uh, moved quickly through the setup for the different transducers, pressure transducer, uh, linear displacement transducer, exactly, you know, etc. Uh, where do you, where does a user find specific information on settings for transducers? For example, like uh, a gray code versus a binary, um, you know, encoding, uh, the range right. of a transducer, clock settings, things, things of that nature. Yeah, yeah, great question. So normally you'll find all that information on your data sheet. Um, looking up the data sheet with your part number, you'll be able to find all that information, um, you know, whether it's uh, MTS, BALIF, or, or others, um, you'll be able to find that information on the data sheet. But uh, most transducers, if, if you're uh, lucky enough, they also have a sticker on the side that will tell you 
um, what resolution that transducer is, how many data bits, whether it's gray or binary, um, you find that with SSI. Uh, for us, I've got that on my pressure transducers as well. It tells me 0 to 10 volts and 0 to 210 bar. Excellent. Thank you very much. And that looks like that's it for questions for now. Uh, we appreciate your uh, presentation. Fantastic presentation. Oh, perfect. All right. Well, thank you. And Thanks, everyone, for taking time out of your day to join the webinar today. David mentioned we offer, Delta offers the Hydraulic Design Guide. Uh, it's written by Peter Noctua. If you visit deltamotion.com, the web, the web address is right there, you'll see this icon about halfway down the main page. Uh, if you enter your mailing information, somebody from Delta will contact you to confirm your mailing address, make sure that we have it right, and then we'll send you a free copy of the design guide. And this goes through our recommendations for how to build a fluid power system for optimum control. I mentioned at the top of today's recording, uh, that or today's presentation rather, that uh, we would be making recordings. Once the post-processing is finished, recordings are available at deltamotion.com mentioned our website before, um, you'll find in the education section a link to the webinars. We also have a discussion forum. We invite you to come and uh, join the discussion. There is also a webinar um, uh, topic there with links to the recordings and uh, links for registration for upcoming webinars. Uh, our next webinar is scheduled for July 14th. And then finally, on YouTube, that we have a channel. It's Delta Motion Control, as you see there, all one word. And that has a playlist with the recordings of all webinar sessions.